straight to it. So I wanted to talk about, well, let's see, I have the topic here. It says how to respond when faced with adversity. So um, this specifically is going to be in the book of Nehemiah. So Nehemiah is actually a very good book to read and it's filled with so much tips and advice on, on what to do when faced with adversity and how to over, overcome adversity despite um, the odds being stacked against you. So as quick summary before getting straight to it, starting off, Nehemiah was a cupbearer for King Artaxerxes, I cannot pronounce that. <laughs> um, during his time there as his cupbearer, he received news that the walls of Jerusalem have been broken down and its gates have been burned. Uh, and, it said, and it also says that the remnant of the Israelites that survived the exile are in great trouble and disgrace. So when he heard this news, it saddened him. He mourned and he actually uh, mourned for a few days and fasted and prayed during his mourning. And it also mentions in the Bible that he was never sad his entire time as a cupbearer for the king. And so when the king notices that he is sad, he initiates a conversation with Nehemiah asking like why are you sad like because that's just a rare sighting he never ever saw him sad and during that conversation Nehemiah makes a request and asks the king to go back to his people to help rebuild the wall and king the king approves so now um, moving forward to the topic of the video of how to overcome adversity when you're faced with it. The title, it actually says here, I'm, I'm using the, the app, and it says progress in spite of opposition. So now we're fast forwarding to when Nehemiah is actually there and they start to initiate rebuilding the wall. And it says here, and I'm gonna read it, it says when Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became furious. He mocked the Jews before his colleagues and the powerful men of Samaria and said, what are these pathetic Jews doing? Can they restore it by themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they ever finish it? Can they bring their burnt stones back to life from the Mount of Rubble? Then Tobiah the Ammonite, who was beside him said, indeed, even if a fox climbed up what they are building, he would break down their stone wall. Listen, our God, for we are despised. So this is Nehemiah speaking. He's like, listen, our God, for we are despised. Make their insults return on their own heads and let them be taken as plunder to a land of captivity. So I'm going to pause there because some people say that um, the whole send back to center thing or like um, not wishing evil on your enemies. But there's many instances in the Bible where Job did it and he said it. Here is another example where Nehemiah's talking to God and asking God to make their insults and the things, the negative things that they're doing return back to them. So it's a thing. I'll continue reading. So it says, do not cover their guilt or let their sin be erased from your sight because they have angered the builders. So we rebuilt the wall until the entire wall was joined together up to half its height for the people had the will to keep working. So they had the will to keep on working. When Sanballat, Tobiah, and the Arabs, Ammonites, and Ashdodites heard that the repair to the walls of Jerusalem was progressing and that the gaps were being closed, they became furious. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and throw it into confusion. I'm gonna pause right there too. So this is also a great example of what Satan will do to us so anyone who has come to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, or who has who is new to Christianity or is reborn, you'll notice that you'll start to get attacks. You'll notice that for some reason, everything is trying to stop you, AKA Satan is trying to stop you from completing and crossing that threshold of, he doesn't wanna let you go. So here is a great example where Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs, Ammonites, and the Ashdodites, they all heard that it was progressing um, despite them talking and, you know, 
all their negativity, it didn't stop them from continuing to build a wall. So they became furious. So it would be the same thing. So when Satan knows that we are progressing and strengthening our relationship with God and getting closer, he's going to try everything to try to stop us. He will use any tactic that he can. He will try whatever it takes for us to not leave him. So I'll continue reading now. Um, verse 8 says, They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and throw it into confusion. That's another thing that Satan does as well. He is the author of confusion. So he wants you to be confused. He wants you to think, okay, whatever I'm doing right now is not working. So um, maybe I should stop. Maybe I should quit. Or this is just so much pressure and so much stuff happening that's going against me trying to accomplish this goal maybe i should stop he, you know it starts to get into your head and um, he starts to throw in confusion in there to make you think that what you're doing is what you shouldn't be doing but in, in theory when you are getting these attacks when you're getting this pushback that is a great sign not a bad sign it's a good sign because that means satan is trying to stop you from accomplishing the will of God. So whatever will or task or whatever it is that God wants you to do and accomplish, if you're getting any sort of adversity or pushback, look at it as a sign of, that's a good sign and not a bad sign. I'll continue going now. And it says here, this is Nehemiah speaking. He says, so we pray to our God and stationed a guard because of them day and night. So they prayed, they set guard, and they were on guard day and night. It says in Judah, it was said, the strength of the laborer fails since there is so much rubble. We will never be able to rebuild the wall. So this is, um, this is Judah speaking. They're saying that the strength of the laborer fails. They're tired since there is so much rubble, so much mess to clean up. We will never be able to rebuild the wall. Same thing for our, our lives, right? Like no matter how much sin that you think you're in, no matter how much you feel like you can't get yourself out of the mess that you created for yourself or how much mess is around you, that's all a lie. That's all lies and um, confusion that the enemy is trying to use as a tactic to get you to stop. Push through that, keep going, just endure. Okay, verse 11. And our enemy said, they won't realize it until we're among them and kill them and stop the work. Do you hear that? When the Jews who lived nearby arrived, they said to us time and again, everywhere you turn, they attack us. So I stationed people behind the lowest sections of the wall at the vulnerable areas. Do you hear that? I stationed them by families with their swords, spears, and bows. After I made an inspection, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, don't be afraid of them. Remember the great and awe-inspiring Lord and fight for your countrymen, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. So Nehemiah doubles down. He doesn't back off. Instead, he decides to make stations at the lowest sections, the weak areas, the vulnerable areas, um, of the wall to make sure that they were ready for any attacks or whatever was to come. It says that they stationed them with swords, spears, and bows and made an inspection of it. So let's apply this to ourselves now. If you know that there are weak areas, holes, cracks where the enemy can sneak in and get in, um, Hone in on those areas, those weak points, and stand watch and stand guard on that. So if you know that you have a weakness with lust, if you have a weakness with fear, if you have a weakness with um, anger, pray for those areas specifically and watch those areas, the weak and vulnerable areas that you know can be an access point for the enemy to attack and break in. So I'll keep reading. It says, when our enemies heard that we knew their scheme and that God had frustrated it, every one of us returned to his own work on the wall. From that day on, half of the men did the work while the other half held spears. They were ready. They held spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers supported all the people of Judah. 
um, who were rebuilding the wall. The laborers who carried the loads worked with one hand and held a weapon with the other. They were not messing around. They were ready. They were work Imagine that, working with one hand and holding a holding a sword in the other. Each of the builders had his sword strapped around his waist while he was building, and the one who sounded the ram's horn was beside me. Then I said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, the work is enormous, like it's gonna take a lot of work and spread out. The work is enormous and spread out, and we are separated far from one another along the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the ram's horn, rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. So we continue the work while half of the men were holding spears from daybreak until the stars came out. They were not messing around. They were not playing. They were standing guard. They were making sure there was no way that anybody was going to attack them. And they weren't going to be ready. At that time, I also said to the people, let everyone and his servants spend the night inside Jerusalem so that they can stand guard by night and work by day. Think about that. Stand guard by night and work by day. When does the enemy attack? At night, he attacks at night. And when it, we have daylight and the day is upon us, that's when we need to get to work. Get to work and stand guard by night. And it says here, and I, my brothers, my servants, and the men of the guard with me never took off our clothes. Each carried his weapon, even when washing. So this is a great example um, of what we should do when you're feeling attacks, adversity, push, um, resistance, when you feel like whatever you're doing, you just can't cross that threshold, you can't break through that barrier, you can't get past that wall. Um, this is a great example of, instead of being the, what's the word? Like in, in sports, like the, uh, not the aggressor versus the, oh, what is it, what is it called, what is it called? The man, I'm literally having a brain fart right now. Don't, what I'm saying is don't wait for an attack to happen to try to be ready. Get ready before something happens. Stand guard and stand watch. If you are, if you already know that you have weak points in areas in your life that is an access point for the enemy to get through, initiate, be the aggressor, be, be the, um, I wish I knew what the word is that I'm trying to say, but don't wait until an attack comes your way to try to do something, okay? Be prepared ahead of time so that if and when it does happen, because God says that we will face these things, you are ready to withstand whatever comes your way. Don't ever leave any access points for the enemy to come through all willy-nilly and then wreak havoc in your life, cause confusion, cause chaos, and then now you're trying to work backwards to, to get things back into order. And then it's like a repeated cycle that keeps coming and going over and over and over again. No, stand guard, stand watch 24 seven, day and night. Be ready at all times because he's ready at all times to attack. He, he is sitting there plotting and planning, causing confusion. He's there to kill, steal and destroy. And he will try whatever it takes, especially if you are new to, if you're new to this, if you're a babe in Christ, if, if, if you were in the world and you decided to change your life and now give your life to Christ, oh, he's going to come for you hard. And I'm not saying that to scare you. Um, that is just the reality of it. Like he doesn't want to, his goal is to bring as many people with him to hell. So if you were once on, t on his team and you're now switching fields and you're, <laughs> He's not gonna like that at all, and that's okay. But you just have to remember to endure, okay? The whole point of it is to keep your faith. Nehemiah, he prayed, he fasted, he stand guard, he stood watch. He left no room for the enemy to attack him. We have to apply the same things to our own lives. And um, just remember, 
that God is with us, God is for us, and he's never going to leave us or forsake us. Um, you have nothing to fear. He's literally, if, if, if you are having these issues, it could very well be that God is testing your faith. He's, he's testing you and he's wanting you to break through this so you can get to the other side and reap the blessings from it, you know? And I went through this when I, when I, three years ago when I first truly gave my life to God. I went through really bad spiritual warfare. I went through really bad spiritual attacks. Um, my faith was tested. I went through confusion. I went through it all. I felt like I was going crazy. And a part of me wanted to be like, you know what? Like, if I'm doing all of these things and I'm still getting attacked, what is the point of it? Like, why am I going through this and putting myself through all of this craziness if it's never going to end? And I'm, I'm telling you right now, if you endure, if you keep your faith, if you trust God, if you just hold on, because I'm telling you, right when you think things cannot get any worse, right when you think like you've reached your capacity and you've got nothing else left, breakthrough will happen. I, I promise you. Just, just keep your faith, hold on, stand guard, stand watch, don't leave any room for the enemy to come in and cause disruption. Pray about everything like Nehemiah did. He prayed, he fasted. There's other, there's more to the story too that um, I didn't mention. So before he actually went to Jerusalem, God put on his heart to go. And that's why he brought it up to the king because God put on his heart to go to rebuild the wall. So when he went to Jerusalem, he didn't tell anybody what God's plan was. He told no one and he said it like I didn't tell anybody I didn't even tell the animals that were around me no one knew he kept it in his heart and that is also a great thing to keep to remember God's business is not everybody's business whatever he tells you whatever he puts on your heart keep that to yourself because remember we don't wrestle against flesh and blood we wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places we wrestle against principalities so you may be confiding in someone about what God has put into your heart, but you don't know what someone's going through spiritually. You don't know if they have a demon. You don't know if they're struggling with any, anything. And that person won't, could not even know that they're being used by Satan as well to stop you. All of a sudden you're like, whoa, 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 where's all this hate coming from? Like, or they're trying to talk you out of doing something or they're saying, oh, maybe you shouldn't do this. You know, I don't think that's a good thing for you. I think you're more like, no, see, don't give anybody any room or any space to stop any plans that God has for you. Okay. Keep, keep your thoughts that God puts on your heart to yourself as much as you can, unless, you know, I had to learn that too. I like to share with those, with, you know, people that I love, the things that I feel like God is putting on my heart, uh, the things that he, I feel like God wants me to do in my journey, but I've learned now it's best to just keep quiet okay just keep it to yourself keep it between you and god trust that he will get you along the way to reach that goal if you put it on your heart he will because god is not a liar okay he doesn't break promises so i would say just to remember to keep your faith endure don't give up trust god trust the process and know that he's putting you through this for a reason He's pruning you, he's shaping you, he's molding you into the, the man of God or the woman of God who he wants you to be. And this is all going to lead you to your blessings in the end. Okay, so that's all that I wanted to say. Thank you for watching my video and I hope that this blesses someone. Yeah, and if you also wanna share any, you know, tips for anyone who's struggling with this in the comments, like what you've done, what you did, to help you get through your journey and to break through your barriers or whatever walls that you were facing and troubles and adversity you were facing, um, leave it in the comments below. I'm sure we're all different. We've all have our own experiences. We all have our own walks and we can share it with each other and help each other out for sure. So I thank you for watching my video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.